Hello, everybody. Uh, it's so great to see you here today. Uh, my name is Caroline, and uh, the last couple of years, um, I've witnessed Uber's um, global portfolio of different payment methods grow, and I was there when we revamped its reliability. And in doing so, I learned a ton, a ton of lessons. But today, I want to share uh, three of those, which I think are pretty abstract, and uh, maybe you'll be able to uh, apply when you think about the reliability of your own engineering projects. Uh, before we dive in, before we dive into the story, I'm going to onboard you onto my team and start with a quick introduction of uh, how I got here. Uh, so back in 2013, I graduated with a master's in computer science from a university back home in Belgium, and then immediately after started an internship at Carnegie Mellon University uh, here in Pittsburgh. Uh, then in uh, the summer of 2014, I joined Uber um, right before we launched the, uh, the public API. And then one year later, finally, I moved to Amsterdam and joined the ever-growing payments teams over there. Um, put in my own words, the mission of the payments team has always been to um, bring Uber to more countries and cities all over the world. And generally, like Nimish was uh, explaining earlier, we do this by offering people's favorite way to pay or get paid on the platform. Looking back at this, we've been fairly successful at this because right now, aside from the credit card with which it all started for Uber. There's now 25 other ways to either pay or get paid on our platform. Secondly, um, as an engineer, naturally, it's my duty to make sure that whatever product I help build for our users continues to work reliably for them. Unfortunately, until 2015, it frequently happened that one of these payment integrations just stopped working in a, in a country or globally for a couple of hours, days, or sometimes even weeks before engineering noticed. That's, that's not a good situation. You, won't, you don't want to be in that situation. Um, so when I say a payment integration, Put very simply, what I mean is we will build a small component into our own backend that knows how to talk to, let's say, PayPal's backend, for example. And then typically, how we track the performance of this component is by emitting uh, success or failure statistics from our own source code, collect that data, and plot it. And then whenever the graph dips below a threshold, which we feel indicates failure of the system, We'll make sure that one of the engineers on our teams automatically gets notified and knows to go take a look at what's going on. All right, that's it. Welcome to Payments Reliability Team. Now I'm going to take you back to 2015. Um, much like many other startups, Uber, Uber's backend was originally built into a single service, um, oftentimes referred to as a monolith. In 2015, this monolith was still around. And uh, when I joined the team in Amsterdam, uh, we had just completed building a new payment integration into the monolith that helped Uber expansion into India. It's a great, it's a great achievement. And at the same time, in the back of our minds, we were thinking about all these outages that were sort of like still happening. And um, so I got curious and I dove into, into this like monolith that was around. And uh, what I found when I dove in is that in fact, in 2015, we already had various different ways to pay. Um, built into the monolith. And the two, the two biggest ones, the ones that had the most use, being the credit card and PayPal, they were monitored very, very well. Um, however, we also had what we call a long tail of payment methods that were uh, built in at different times by different teams in various different ways um, into the monolith. And they weren't all monitored very well. And um, so for me to basically go in and and then create these, uh, these dashboards that I mentioned earlier and the alerts that we need to support or at least start tracking reliability of uh, these payment integrations. And because of, uh, of how these were all built very differently, I had to almost go create that stuff manually, like for every different payment integrator. Um, a couple of months later, Uber's engineering teams sort of like got together and we doubled down on uh, taking apart that big monolith. And um, at the time, also my team, we built a new home, new backend home for all of these payment integrations to sort of like uh, fit in. And of course, it was like a new architecture. So we built it all very clean. And then the observability tooling was sort of like baked in. And it worked transparently for any of the other teams at Uber building in new ways to pay. Ever since, uh, it's, been, it's taken just a metaphorical push of a button to generate these dashboards and these alerts that I was talking about earlier. Um, this um, brings me to my first lesson I want to share with you. 
is um, when you think about reliability and tracking your systems, try to do it early, try to build it um, into the core uh, components of your design pattern, because if you invest that early, then you'll continue to get all this stuff for free as your program expands. Having gone through that exercise, uh, we now had uh, this really like, beautiful dashboard that showed us uh, the state of every different payment integration at Uber and, and the different functions they were performing at any moment in time. It was, it was really great. Um, even though that all the outages, they were sort of like still happening, but at least we had the ability to, to catch them immediately instead of sort of like being there after the fact. Um, although I noticed that every time there was a payment integration outage, we would ask ourselves the same question. How many people are affected by this? Did they fail to create an Uber account or did they fail to request a ride? Or did we, did we just fail to process their payment after they get out of the car? Or does that mean that they can't go on a new trip before we fix that payment issue? In effect, our team, we didn't have any idea uh, what the impact was of many of these outages or at least not very quickly. And, um, and to make matters a little bit worse, it turns out that uh, most of the payment uh, outages that we experienced was actually due to the third party systems failing. And so what we did on our team is we would immediately reach out to the engineers of the other companies and would work together, but it, we actually didn't have any control over the outage. Like we didn't have any ways or mechanisms to mitigate the impact to our users. And um, that, it's not because it's impossible, because it is possible. It's because when we were building the system, we just didn't think about building those mechanisms in. So second lesson I want to share with you is when you're thinking about building reliability in your system, remember your first goal is always to reduce the impact to your users. Um, and then as time progressed, uh, teams at Uber kept building in new and uh, different ways to pay and um, which helped our expansion into the global markets. Um, however, our team, teams in Amsterdam and San Francisco didn't necessarily grow proportionally uh, with that. So that didn't make our, what we call on-call rotation very, uh, very easy. And, um, and on top of that, there's this global aspect of this payment portfolio being that uh, some payment integrations are used over several continents, whereas other ones are very local to a country or even a region within a larger country. Uh, that made it so that some payment integrations had a lot, a lot of traffic and um, a lot of users, I mean, um, and, and other payment integrations had very few users, which makes it hard to reliably detect whether we're dealing with a good or like a, a bad situation, uh, basically. And, um, and on top of that, uh, the, the traffic going into Uber's backend tends to go like up and down with the sun and the sun sort of like rises at different moments in time all over the world. And then we're monitoring this from Amsterdam. I mean, it, it got pretty crazy um, at, at some point. So we, uh, we figured out that we had to be a little bit smarter about how we were defining failure and, and success uh, to start detecting these outages. And, um, and I remember us trying to uh, do like three different ways of a type of anomaly detection where we sort of like look at our past uh, traffic to try and predict um, like successful future basically and, and base these thresholds that I was talking about earlier um, on that. And I, like I said, we tried like three different ways, I think, and it felt like a race that we couldn't win. Um, and at the same time, this whole on-call situation was sort of like weighing down the team. So clearly we, what we were trying wasn't really working. And so where in the past we were um, always monitoring the payment systems or like just around the payment systems, now what we decided to do was to go a little bit uh, further away from the payment systems and to the outermost layer of our backend as close to our user as possible. And uh, so what we did is just at the entry point where we were talking to our riders and drivers of smartphones, basically, we started to capture information on uh, trips and signups in real time. Then we pulled in uh, payment integration dimensions and country and city dimensions. And with that, we built what is now known as the payments business monitoring dashboard. And then we base these automatic alerts on the data in that dashboard. And it was like almost overnight, we were focusing on the incidents that mattered the most. And as engineers, we could just read off what user flow was affected, how many people were affected, 
um, what country or city was affected. It turned out that the very sort of like detailed system capturing that we were doing earlier was actually more suited for debugging and that it was the business that we had to monitor. So the third and final lesson I want to share with you is to actually start with monitoring your business and only worry about monitoring your systems later. Thank you for your attention. I'm Caroline at uber.com and I am a very proud member of our engineering team back in Amsterdam. <laughs>